Today, I had an opportunity to try out a prototype of a really cool accessory for the Wacom Cintiq and other types of pen tablets that have touchscreen support. As you may know, currently, if you want a stand for your Wacom Cintiq, you need either the stand that Wacom sells, which is a little bit rigid, it has some rotation and some movement to it, or you can get an Ergotron arm if you really want to be able to position it in just about any position. But both of those options have their pros and cons, and they're really kind of the two dominant stands or arms on the market. So what I got to try out today is kind of a third option. It's somewhere kind of in between an arm and a stand. So first, let me just clarify that this is not a sponsored video. I wasn't paid to make this video. It just seems like something that you might want to know about. I think it sounds cool, so let's check it out. So this is the Zoot. It's an arm for touchscreen devices such as the Wacom Cintiq, but you could use it on other similar pen displays that use touch input. It makes moving from monitor mode to touch mode fast and easy. You simply push or pull on the screen and it automatically rotates the angle of the screen. The screen feels almost weightless with almost no friction. And best of all, the Zoot's electromagnetic braking system locks the tablet into place as soon as you release it. If you have a keyboard on your desk, no problem. The Zoot was engineered to hover just above your keyboard and mouse when in touch mode, and it can easily be positioned right in your lap. So how did I discover this? Well, the inventor contacted me and said, hey, I happen to be in Bellevue, you're in Seattle, why not come try it out? So I checked out his website. It looked like a legit product. It's actually something that's engineered, unlike the things I've seen recently, like the acrylic brackets and all that stuff. This guy is actually an inventor. This is actually a real legit product. So I knew it was gonna be cool before I even went to see it, but I'll get into what I thought about it a little bit later. So I took a trip on over to Bellevue with my cameras and my gear. We fired up Corel Painter and I gave it a test. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of that footage. This is Chris Meyerchin, the inventor of the Zoot system. We had a nice little interview that I recorded, but somehow I didn't hit the record button, so I can't show you that. <laughs> but I'll just do my best to kind of speak for him here. So here you can see Chris working with the Zoot system attached to the Cintiq 27, which is what I use at home. You can see he's got it positioned right in his lap there. It's in a really nice, comfortable position, and it feels really nice to work that way. Now, if you're sitting in front of your tablet, then this is kind of what it looks like if we go around up and over the back. And you can see it attaches to the back of the Cintiq very much like the Wacom stand or the Ergotron arm would. And if we swing around to the back here, you can see that there is this big arm unit which has a whole bunch of really fancy, complicated stuff inside of it that I don't understand. That connects to an articulating arm which is clamped to the desk. There's also a couple of legs that come off of it to keep it stable on the desk. And then there's some electronics and circuits which attach to a touch strip on the side. You use that touch strip to engage and disengage the magnets. So here's me drawing on it, just doing some test doodles, nothing really fancy or impressive. We're just kind of discussing this while I'm doodling on it. Right now I have it in kind of that vertical upright mode, which is the mode that I'm used to working in. But then if I want to, all I need to do is touch the sides of the tablet, and there's those touch strips that I showed you earlier. Those will automatically disengage the magnets. And so automatically that screen is gonna to rotate to whichever angle I want it to be at. And then when I let go of that touch strip, the magnets lock it in place, so then it's rigid again. And then when it's in the more horizontal mode, it's much closer to you, it's much easier to use the touch screen. And from an artist's perspective, it's really nice because you can actually rest your arm on the tablet and kind of lean on it and draw. And that's way better on my back. I noticed immediately that, cool, I can now lean on my tablet and actually be comfortable when I draw rather than being upright and having to hold my arm out like this and getting what they call gorilla arm syndrome, where your arm starts to get really, really fatigued from holding it out. I've had so many drawing sessions where I've drawn for hours and hours on end, and my arm is just so tired from that. So if I can have that tablet down and in my lap and just right here and I can rest on it, that's as good as resting on your desk and being able to draw on a piece of paper. Now you might say, well, you could use the Ergotron arm or the Wacom stand to get that down into your lap, and that's true. But if I do that with my Ergotron arm, it's on an arm, so it's gonna shake and wobble around everywhere, and I can tighten it till the cows come home, but I'm never gonna get it rigid enough to where it doesn't wobble. So here's me kind of rotating it and touching it and moving it around a little bit, just doing some general testing. I am gonna be working with this a little bit more in the future because this is a work in progress. It's not available yet, but it will be available on crowdfunding. So as Chris makes improvements on this, I'm gonna be checking out those improvements and giving my feedback. But this Zoot system could really be a game changer for touch enabled pen displays. So I am gonna be demoing this a little bit more in the future. I didn't have all that much time to test it, but we did discuss some potential pros and cons of the device. So I'll go ahead and share those with you. 
Now keep in mind we're kind of comparing this to the Wacom stand or the Ergotron arm and how that's going to affect your workflow. There's lots of different types of artists who work in lots of different ways. This is just my own particular workflow and what works best for me and the judgments I made are based on that. So we'll start with the pros. It's really nice that it takes a minimal effort in order to be able to just rotate the screen wherever you want it. You just touch the touch sensors and you can rotate it and the tablet almost kind of moves itself. It's very fluid, very weightless. You just put it where you want it. Now I haven't used the most recent Wacom stand, but when I used the one for the 24, you had to put some muscle into it and you had to really like get it into place. It took a little bit of effort, but it did go pretty fluidly between being perfectly vertical or being a little bit lower and angled. With the Ergotron arm, I'm able to move it around, but it has too many axes of motion. So, you know, there's an arm and it's bending in all these different ways. So you have to kind of go side to side and like wiggle it and get it into place. So it makes me not want to move the Ergotron arm because of that. And even though I can move my tablet all around, I don't. I just leave it alone because it's just a nuisance to try to get it back into place. It's also very ergonomic and it's easier on my back. I was able to kind of rest on it, having it in my lap or if I wanted to put it up in a more vertical orientation, I can put it at that perfect arm's length or wherever I want it, and it can go forward and backward. It's also more touch friendly and it makes you actually want to use touch and that's part of the reason why this was invented is because touch screens could be really, really useful, but there's some flaws about them. There's some human interaction with the device that needs to be bridged and needs to be made easier. And that's kind of what this is doing. It's making it so you can get that touch screen right where it should be so that you're working comfortably with it. So you're not reaching out really far for the touch screen or doing it in some way that's just gonna make you really turned off to the touch altogether. And that's kind of been my experience with touch so far. I have touch on my tablet, but I don't find that I use it all that much because it can be kind of inconvenient sometimes. So potentially the Zoot system could solve that. And the Zoot system could also be useful for non-drawing applications. Now I do YouTube videos and I do audio editing and I do a lot of things that require me to be in monitor mode, but maybe I can do some of those things using touch now. I could have it more in my lap and then I can edit videos using the touch rather than the mouse and the keyboard. It's really kind of a shift in how you work and I think that's gonna be the future going forward. We're probably going to be using touch devices more rather than keyboards. And I know some of us who are older really wanna use the keyboard still, but you know, eventually we might change and we might not wanna use a keyboard anymore and everything will be touch. And so it's nice to have something like this. When you are moving it into your lap, another pro is that it goes over your keyboard, so it's not gonna like squish your keyboard or accidentally press buttons or anything like that. It's been engineered so that there's a bit of a distance. And then my last pro, which I mentioned earlier, is it's actually an invention. It's not just something that, you know, was walk guyvered. As I like to call it, where people piece stuff together in their garage and then they go, here you go, here's an adapter, here's a stand for your Cintiq, you know? Now it's time to talk about the cons, and I'm going to say that these are potential cons because they're not necessarily a flaw of the device. A lot of these cons are shared by the Wacom stand and the Ergotron as well, and it really depends on what your workflow is. You know, some people use a keyboard, some people don't. Some people care about certain positions, some people don't. So potential cons, it covers your keyboard. Now that's also a pro because it goes over your keyboard and it doesn't go on top of it to press buttons, but then you can't touch your keyboard. It's covered by the screen. But if you don't really need your keyboard and mouse because you have a touchscreen keyboard, maybe we don't need to use the keyboard and the mouse as much anymore. And that's kind of what working with this made me start to think about is how is my workflow going to change over time as the technology changes? Now it's not the end of the world to take the thing and just put it back in the monitor mode and then you can access your keyboard. But I found that that interrupted my workflow a little too much. So what I did is I just had the on-screen keyboard. I only really need that to add a few labels to layers here and there. I'll use my express key remote for all of my modifiers like shift and alt, that's not a problem. So I didn't really need the keyboard all that much while I was working. I know when I'm working with the Mobile Studio Pro, I don't really have a keyboard most of the time, so I know that I can do without it. So that's all this kind of stuff I was thinking about while I was working with it. Another potential con is that it does not rotate. You can't turn it like that. You can do that with the new Wacom stand and you can do it with the Ergotron arms. If that's a deal breaker for you, well, this thing does not rotate. But honestly, I can rotate mine on the Ergotron arm but the only time I've ever done that is to show you in a video that I can do it and it's not like I ever really sit down and I work in portrait orientation. Another potential con is that the unit itself, the Zoot system, as you saw earlier, is a gargantuan. It's pretty bulky, it's pretty heavy, so it's not like it's gonna be something that you're gonna be transporting around and moving around, but 
you know what? Neither is the Wacom stand and neither is the Ergotron arm. I'm not detaching it from my desk and moving it elsewhere. So once any of these systems are installed, they're gonna be there and they're gonna stay there. So their weight isn't really as much of a consideration unless your desk has a weight limit. Now the last potential con I know is a con to a lot of people and that is the price. The price isn't really set in stone. I don't know if it's necessarily been determined. We kind of just speculated on what that would be, but it'll probably be about the same price as the Wacom stand is. The advantage to the Zoot though is that you can use the Zoot on other types of tablets. So if you decided, I don't like Wacom anymore, I'm gonna get a Surface Studio, you would be able to then convert that using a kit that comes with the device to convert it to a Surface Studio or a different type of tablet. So just to kind of recap the comparison between the Wacom stand, the Ergotron arm, and the Zoot system, it's much easier to move between the different positions of monitor mode and down kind of more horizontal for touch or lap drawing mode. And it's very fluid and smooth. All you need to do is touch and just move it into place. It's silky smooth. You let go and it stays where it's at versus the Ergotron arm and the Wacom stand. It takes a little bit more maneuvering to get it into place and that makes you not want to move the tablet. So what's the point in having an articulating stand if you don't want to move it? But as I said earlier, it doesn't rotate. So if you really want something that rotates, that's a consideration. You know, the Ergotron arm can move over and around and it has more of a range of movement. But again, how many artists are really taking their tablet and like moving it over here or moving it over there? Most people are kind of going back and forth or kind of rotating this way. And so the Zoot system just kind of focuses on that. In my opinion, no one option is best. It really depends on your workflow, your setup, and really what your expectations are and what you need. The Zoot system is just meant to provide another option. So that's all I have about it to share today. Again, I'm gonna be working with it more in the future, and it's still kind of a work in process, so I'm sure features are gonna be added and tweaks are gonna be made. And as soon as I learn about that stuff and I get to try it again, I will record more footage and I'll share it with you. In the meantime, if you're interested in checking out the Zoot system, you can check out Chris's website at zoot.me. He has lots of awesome demo videos there and explanations of what the Zoot system can do. If you think the Zoot system looks like it could be a cool alternative to the Wacom stand or the Ergotron arm, comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe and enable notifications. That way you don't miss a single new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.